Sven, from Germany, uh, proud head coach of Game Theory Jiu Jitsu. And my class today is, um, is called Dynamic Controlling, Controlling Dynamics. Um, the key idea behind it is that um, control doesn't necessarily and this only mean just pinning people to the ground. Um, it's very, very hard to do on someone who's on like, the same skill level as you and is not like 30 kilos lighter. It's very, very hard to pin someone um, and taking all the ability to move. Um, also, if you do that, someone who's not moving has a very easy time usually of defending. As long as you're not moving, it's kind of easy to keep your elbows in, to keep your chin tucked, to keep your knees closed. Um, and as soon as there's movement, there's also spaces opening up for me to attack and to like um, to better my control position. Um, so that's what we're going to go through today. Um, ideally, I want to be able to dictate movement, not negate it. So I want my opponent to move on my terms. I will give you windows to move, but I will always be in control of your movement. I will always be first, and I'll make each stop along the movement just worse for you. So you're moving from bad position to bad position, and um, next to all the, the advantages I just said, um, it's also psychologically really hard to move all the way and just make it suck even more for you. So give, giving them hope and then taking it from them is oftentimes uh, way more, way more reward, rewarding than not giving them hope at all. Um, so that's basically a part of like my idea of movement. That pretty much each of you who wrote with me up until now um, has seen at least Unless you were controlling me the whole time, um, you have seen a bit of um, what I'm talking about, and we're kind of taking a, taking a short approach to it today. It's like it's basically stuff for a whole seminar, but I'm trying to fiddle the basic idea into um, into an hour. Um, the topic we're not really going to cover is right positions. I talked a bit about it in my class on uh, when was Thursday now Tuesday. Um, right positions. Oftentimes, are positions that are not actually rewarded points in, in the point system of Jiu Jitsu, um, but that, that are amazing controlling positions, sometimes better than the ones that are worth points. Um, I would argue that uh, knee right is probably a better control position, um, or a better, um, yeah, better control position than, say, a knee on belly. It's way more controlling, it's just not worth any points. And um, also, kind of the, the when the thought process started is it's hard to get the, the regular side control you learn on day one like underhook and head control or being underneath both both arms it's just hard to get on a competent opponent or even on, a, on an opponent that's equal to your skill level um, because everyone knows if, if my opponent gets into these spaces and I do that it's bad but you, you learn that in the beginning so it's pretty hard especially since pre started ruining jiu-jitsu for everyone, um, it's, it's just hard to get there. And there's a million and one ways to get from this inside control back to your arms on the inside, underhooking, escaping, coming on singles, and all that. Um, so this is kind of where this all took off. And interestingly, it's um, I had an easier time teaching this to people who wrestled before, um, because that's actually how they do a lot of their control. And even if you watch high-level jiu-jitsu guys, they use this form of control, or similar forms of control, it just seems like really no one's really talking about it. So even the high-level jiu-jitsu guys who use that, still teach the one and only side control, like head and arm control. Um, and sometimes I feel like they, they might not even really know that this is not actually what they're doing. So th there's a lot of things in jiu-jitsu I think that are done, but not said, and I'm in this class trying to count that out. A little bit. Uh, well, can I use you? Because you kind of already know uh, what I'm doing. Um, Will is pretty powerful, has a pretty good, uh, just take your center. Uh, it's pretty powerful, has a good bridge, and is also tall. And he, he's, he's stronger than me, he's longer than me, and he's more explosive. So that all, that all kind of works against me. Um, what I want you to do first is start in like your regular side control position, but Will do, Will's doing a good job of bringing his arms to the inside and, and framing. This position, I think, has um, a place and a time, and that is when I'm on the inside. So when I have wedges and I'm on the inside, this is a good controlling position. 
Um, I could basically do what I wanted, and anything with that setup would probably be a good controlling position because I somehow managed to get his arms all the way out of the way. I'm just wrapped around his body, and it doesn't really matter if I'm strong, if I bring my knees in, I will be in control here for quite a while. As soon as whatever he does, whatever of those es escapes you learned um, pretty much in the beginning that brings the, the elbows inside, if I stay here, I'm losing position. He's regarding, or he's coming up with, with an underhook, or he's coming up with a single, I'm, I'm losing position. So, start here. Your partner um, chooses which method ever to bring his, his frames to the inside. I no longer have wedges, he has frames. So, I'm no longer attached to him. The only thing I have to, to build control is my weight. But I don't want those frames to catch my uh, to carry my weight. All this movement, no matter which, hip escape, coming up with a single, wrestling, bridging, it will all come from the hip. And the cool thing is, those frames don't reach the hip. So all I'm doing is, this arm becomes useless and sometimes a liability anyways, so I'm putting that to my close side, and all I do is tripod into his hips. I bring my ear close to his hip, my shoulders on the other, like I'm, if I turned upside down, it would look like I was carrying Will on my shoulder. And I just stay here. For now, don't do anything specific with your arm. Just make sure that your bottom elbow locks his knee, his leg from, from entering. So I don't want this, this leg so tight that he's able to bring his knee in, but it's weird anyways. I just drop the elbow and I stay here. From here, I want the bottom partner to move around and try to push off. Don't make it sparring. Just develop a feeling of how do I balance myself and still stay there. Um, so you work, you try and push me, you try and get, you, you can even try and get under hooks and you just, you just move around with it. Um, there might be a point when Will now turns to his left side, uh, your right side, sorry, upside down. Now this becomes kind of obsolete. The only thing you do now, when this gets weird, switch it. Do the exact same thing now. So, you basically do one of those two positions. The only thing you do is switch your head and run as much as you like. So, use your mobility, drop all your weight into the hip, move as he moves, and kind of ignore the arms for now. Don't do anything specific with your arm, instead blocking the, the low leg. And he can push, frame, try turn, and all you do is carry him on your shoulder. This arm stays on the tight. You move, so move whichever way you like, try and bridge, try and roll over. This is all you do. Swimming your head from inside to outside. This is how you constantly run to the leg and move around. That's it for now. And then we bring it in in like three minutes or so. Okay? Go! Okay, um, before we move on, really imagine carrying like a huge log on your, on your shoulder. Um, you wouldn't want to carry that log on the, on the point of your shoulder joint, that would suck after a while. You really want to carry it on your shoulder. So um, some of you want to, maybe, I, I like the idea, some of you I think want it to be mean and put the shoulder in, in your partner's belly, but when my, my shoulder is somewhere on the center line, it's pretty easy for me to just slip off that way and look really stupid. So imagine Will being the log, and I just put him on my shoulder like that. That will lead to my ear being towards uh, his far hip bone, and my collarbone or my trap being on his, on his close hip bone. So I'm not here. Um, you guys should not be able to see my shoulder. Now I'm actually pushing into him, and he will not be able to put me over there. As soon as some of you guys can see my shoulder, this happens. Also, um, this is probably the part that is weird if you're used to your regular side control. Put your hip up. This doesn't really do. I, I don't have any weight going into Will. This does way better. Same goes for here. Same position. And so I, I want like a, a 90 degree angle in my hip. If it's lower, then my, my weight starts dropping over here. If it's less, 
I'm using a lot of words. I might do that for balance purposes, but I always want to come back to around 90 degrees in my head. Let move around. So give him one more try, just another three minutes. Imagine carrying him like a log, and he's turning inside of there. Like the log you're carrying is constantly turning, but it doesn't really change the position at all. Okay, go back to it. Okay, um, I'm still seeing a lot of shorts and bellies. Put, find the hip hop. Um, let me, for, just for a second, grab some of the light on your button. Re really imagine, you want, uh, stand up please. Imagine you want to carry the, this is where you want to put it. If my, my shoulder's on his hip bone here, if my shoulder's in his belly, he's starting to slip off that direction. And that's exactly what I don't want. Really imagine like re reverse carrying them. Um, your shoulder will find the hip. If you carry someone and their belly button is on your shoulder, he, this will be tiring and he will start to fall off. So it's basically really carrying someone, just in reverse. Um, the next question I got was, which direction do I look? Um, in general, it doesn't matter. You can look towards his feet, like you would, for example, after finishing a double leg. Um, common scenario when people do their first double leg, they finish it and they get taken over to the side. Like you, you roll through and you pull, you pull bottom side control after your double leg. I guess that everyone did that in the beginning. Um, what you would do to stop that is doing that and coming back. So you're basically doing that. And you can as well look at his face or towards his shoulders. You can do the exact same thing here. Um, we're now going to play with this one because um, especially right after passing guard, you will find this pretty useful as soon as you get, um, get used to it. If we take any outside guard passing scenario, um, I think with Dali earlier you did um, X passes. Usually after an X pass, I'm not getting right into side control. He's, even if I get past leg, I'm gonna go right into his frames. So that's the exact same thing. He's waiting for me to regard him. When he's regarding, it's the bottom leg that's annoying as hell. And now this arm again becomes a liability. It does, it's, no, it's no use, and I might get on by. So, especially on scenarios like this, like right before or right after you um, find side control, this is really helpful. I'm getting past him, and there's frames there. This leg is annoying, so the arm, we kind of care for it. Fuck the frames. I'm going right here. I'm below this frame, and I'm below this frame. You're framing nothing, basically. And I have control of your hip. And now the, the next step we're going to do is, you, you will be moving through that north-south vector with your feet, and constantly keep looking in that direction. No matter even if you switch sides, we're still looking this, this way, towards the shoulders. Um, you want to piece by piece conquer the, the spots between his elbow and his ribs. If he's framing, we were here, he was framing. Frames make it now because they, they, they are so far out and kind of useless. They make it easier for me to gain inside control. This is enough. This wouldn't be enough if I was here. I can't really do a lot with this. Once I'm here, I now have an arm on the inside. So what we're aiming for is getting an arm on the inside, on the cross side, that's pretty easy. This arm is occupied with controlling the hip. As soon as I have, get my fingertips through, I will find space for my elbow. And all I do now is drop into reverse case of arm. Be careful, that's why the hips hang up with the, with the close arm. If it's strapped underneath your hip, this might, this might hurt, so be kind of nice to your partner. This now, this is side control with inside control. I have it right here, and now I can drop my weight. I will only drop my weight and my hip as soon as I have something on this inside. When I drop my weight and I don't, I'm giving up position control. Now that's laying on top of him, I have inside control and I can actually start going into attacks. Mainly keywords and non stop jokes. So, forget about which car pass you're doing. We just Halfway past, past the guard, and that's just a shit ton of friends I'm looking at. 
This gap is mine. This arm is of no use over there. I'm going on this side and dropping my shoulder right after my hand. Right there. As soon as he starts pushing anything, there it is. Be careful with this arm. I don't care if it's behind me or in front of me. This is pretty good. Pretty easy to mount from here. I'll take his take back assistance. So when you end up in reverse side control, for now, mission is complete. One last time. We somehow magically get past this guard. This is a shit ton of frames. This arm goes there. I'm dropping into my control. I can take all the time in the world here. As soon as the elbow has no contact anymore, I'm just going to go right through there. Or, in this case, as he's on the inside here, I'm going to go around it. Ideally, I want my elbow on the back of his head. My hand on his, on his shoulder blade, and the other hand can help me stretch him out. Now I can drop my weight onto him. Okay, understood? Good. Try it. One more, one more problem we can solve with this, and one more point from where we can get into the position. Um, well, again, whenever we start in any like regular or south position, when we hit the square with the mat, um, in, in any gym I've ever been to, there's that one annoying guy that puts his feet in from anywhere. There's that one guy that has like feet up until his legs up onto his shoulders. And it will somehow find a way to bring those goddamn feet in front of your, your hip. The usual answer to this, is, and it, it makes sense in a way, is I'm gonna bring my hips as far away as possible, which in this case means all the way to the mat. So I'm trying to touch my hip bones to the mat. The problem with this is I have to go very far back. And uh, I don't know how flexible Will is. Try it. Um, go, yeah, get that shit. No, it sucks. Um, with someone who has a decent mobility and is good at like mini framing your hips with his hands, you cannot go low enough um, because he, his toes can touch the mat. When your hips touch the mat, you're even and you, you're probably going to lose position sooner or later. Um, as weird as it sounds, or it, it's kind of counterintuitive, but actually doing the exact opposite of that and bringing your hips up and try putting into his hips again will solve that. Mm -hmm. The thing is, um, just roll up and put your toes on the mat. Okay, go back. Now do the same thing, but don't lift your tailbone. You lifted yeah. it. No, there it was. Imagine me just nail gunning his hip into the hip floor. That's it. That, my hip is never going to be here. So when I'm here and I feel him rolling up, get your feet in front of my hip. No. By pushing, he's even helping me getting inside. I'm getting inside now, and, and reverse case up, this thing's not gonna happen. So, if, if there's this, this one guy back home in your gym that always does it to you, once he gets here and you like sprawl like crazy, and he still does it, as soon as he starts doing that, just put your, to, uh, put your shoulders into his hips. If for some freak reason, he might still be able to do that, help yourself on the other end of the lever, just, just use anything to put the hat up. Now this won't work anymore. He won't even get his, his feet like in 90 degrees off the map. Probably, won't work, yeah. So this is another scenario where we get into the exact same position and we can solve those, those nasty flexible parts. Um, I don't care about the second arm. I don't care, I, I'd honestly rather be here with the arm in front of me because it gives me winners to attack this. If this somehow ended up behind me during all this, I usually go into mount or get, go into further like positional attacks because there's just no arm in front of me to, to break. So from here, it's usually all starting to pressure my way into mount and I usually get this, this grip with it too. Um, we're going to do this first and then address uh, the close arm. Um, every time we do this, start in that tripod and find your way in. So for now, my starting in north south and try this thing. Try blocking the blocking the heat from entering. 
We're here. He starts to roll up. Ah, oh, nobody. We're here. Arms are out already because he wanted to push my hips. I get to the inside. And yeah, he's going to be nice and put it here. If you sit on it and it has less than 90 degrees from the shoulder, it's, it's no good use to get low and push up again. It's just too easy for him to keep you low. If you're sitting on it, that's okay. You might as well release it. Or even wrist lock in here. It's a nasty one. Uh, but for now, his arms are higher than 90%, especially when we came from the south. You just get all the way out here. Help yourself with this hand on the hip bone if he's pushing against it. If you're pushing this arm down, do that. My elbow finds the back of his head. My hand finds the shoulder blade. This helps me to raise my butt off the floor and I put some of my weight across it. Now I hook the back of my heel into the hip. I don't, I'm not just stepping onto the mat. This is releasing a lot of pressure. I'm hooking myself to it. So now it's pretty hard for him to bridge me anymore. Now it's easy for him to bridge into me. If you bridge into me, I'm, I might end up in bottom or something. This attaches me, bridge, and just rolling over. If he doesn't bridge, this now becomes the push that the hand has been, and my elbow travels all the way around his head to his other ear, and I even trap this one. Okay, so from a relatively loose position, you come into a tight one, and you squeeze your way into your mouth. All clear? Go. Um, getting both arms up here is um, the rarer occasion of the two. Usually I will end in front of one arm. So usually after all this, I will end up here. Um, we're basically going to use that tripod again. Um, and also be before I forget, if anything ever goes wrong on your way down here, like there's an unexpected frame, or you're losing that inside position or whatever, just go back to that tripod. This is like the retreating zone that I would go back to um, on my way back into position. So if I gain that inside position, but like on the way down, this, this arm comes back to the inside, by some extent, no, no. This arm would have been dangerous if I just dropped. I would now maybe lose position. So as soon as I feel there's something going wrong, nah, I'm staying here, doing this again. So, we, we came here now. Um, the two key attacks I have from here are um, Kimuras, or attacks on this arm, and North South Chokes. So, to get this, we're basically going to use the, the exact same mechanic, just that now we do it with uh, grips. I want it to go underneath this arm. If he keeps it out there, I might help him there to keep it and just put pressure on his face and then it's more towards the north south choke. If I manage to get to the inside, I want the, the blade of my forearm I'm using for ankle locks and chokes to cut on the, on the start of his tricep here, right in between the point of his elbow and where the point where his tricep gets a bit thicker. There's like a, a little valley that I will cut through. There, my elbow will push my wrist towards my shoulder. Um, try get this elbow out. Doesn't really work. Also, this raises his bottom shoulder, and I will place my thigh tight underneath his shoulder. So I have a, a block underneath his shoulder, and I have this elbow under tight control. This, this already hurts a bit, um, and it's hard, gonna be hard for him to retract this elbow because there's just nowhere for his arm to go. Usually the, the hand is behind my neck, just like now. Sometimes I even grab my neck, um, and oftentimes, even if people feel what's coming, so they, they won't just let, show me the hand. I'm going back to the exact same thing. I'm dropping my ear towards his hip, and I'm coming back up into my tripod. It's good use to elevate his head with your knee. Usually the head comes up with it because you're attached to the arm. What I'm gonna do now is put my right shoulder forward and put my head back. This will pop out his hand and I can gain the Kimura. With his head resting on my, on my leg, it's gonna be hard for him 
to rip out the kimura. He would have to turn into me and bring his shoulder and elbow to the mat. And as I'm elevating his head, try to turn into me here. It's, it's pretty hard, I can slow him down pretty good and gain my kimura and go into whichever kind of kimura attack I prefer from here. Step over for arm bars, uh, take the back with it. From here it's like a different branch of decisions, but this is what we're going to get to. I still have his head rested here, so I, this makes it easier for me to choose my path of attack. Depending on what I want to do. So, you go here. This cuts back. No, no matter where this arm is, even people hiding their arm in my armpit, I gain the elbow. You want to start easier now with the arm on top of our shoulder? Cut through the tricep, bring it in until your hand reaches your shoulder. Really cut through that. Bring your thigh underneath the shoulder, make sure he cannot extract his arm here. From there, bury your head, raise your hips. See how his head is coming off the mat? It's, it's hard for him to keep his head on the mat because I'm elevating this shoulder by, the, by controlling the arm. Even if, it's, if you like bend your neck and put your head on the mat, it's pretty easy to just correct that. Pop out the hand, gain the kimura, go into a, whichever kind of attack with the kimura or whichever follow up you like. Stop it here for now, because from there it's like a branch of decision. Okay, it's gonna take some time to figure out the, this cutting. It, it should really feel like you're, you can attest to it. Like cutting your, your uh, the part of your arm you would use for an ankle lock or a guillotine, really cutting it into there, and then you're basically like flipping his arm over your forearm. You put your forearm in as a wedge, and your weight puts the elbow down over your own forearm, and this is what would expose the hand there. Okay? Try to figure that one out. So you go like the same. They get the, the whole thing is, is enough material for a full seminar, and we're gonna kind of breeze through it a little bit. Um, said the two finishes attached are mainly kimuras or follow-ups with kimuras, and and not self chokes. Okay. Whenever Will doesn't want to give me his arms. Uh, yeah, we underneath that one. Yeah. Whenever I feel like he's he's doing a good job of defending this here. Um, I just use it to elevate his head. Either if he elevates it as soon as I go into my tripod, oftentimes the head just comes up because he's he's just sick and tired of this being pressured down. So he's like grasping for air. I can easily take this head up with me. I'm kind of, I'm reverse stacking him basically. If there's no, no way to, to get to the armor, you just get, uh, did a good job of keeping his elbows in and defending. Yeah, this exposes his neck though. Um, I can't go over the full finish for, uh, for the North South Church, sadly. That would be an hour in itself, probably. Um, but before going flat again, come to your reverse Kesakatami again and make sure that the, the edge of your lat finds his neck. Um, also, I want the elbow close to his neck. Oftentimes, if I come into it, there's some air in between his neck and my elbow. So I'm closing down uh, my side of his, of his neck, but not the one where my elbow is supposed to be. It's pretty hard on most mats to suck in the elbow. There's just too much, too much friction. That's um, part of our, both our weight on it. And um, I'm, I'm not gonna move my, my elbow here. It's too much friction with my whole forearm. So I'm using this position to just push his head towards my elbow and reset it. And only now, when I feel that my lat is tightly attached, um, I get a lot of finishes just here, just elevating my butt slightly and, and um, pushing my lat in. If, if that's not enough, probably this. If that's not enough, right from here, I will again walk back and uh, drop it into my walking latch to finish. Um, but again, don't worry about the finish too much. The thing I'm, I want to point out is if for some reason I just can't get a good control of the elbow, he's doing a good job of constantly getting on my nerves and whatever, I just grab it, go into my tripod and elevate the head. 
He's still worrying about this, this arm, rightfully so. I could, could still attack it if he makes a mistake. I just wrap the head and come back again into my Kesa, into my reverse Kesa, and make sure that my weight is on my side of the center line. Especially with Will, I, it happened to me actually a couple times when we rolled. Uh, I have my weight too far over to this side. He just bridge me over, so make sure your weight is down on this side. If you feel air in between his neck and your elbow, use your body to drop it and push the head over to your elbow. Come back, see if your, the blade of your lap is enough. I don't have an impressive lap, but I have quite good finishes from here. If that's not enough, walk back, drop your shoulder low, and finish it. Again, don't worry about the finish too much. This is like this would be a, a whole seminar. Um, just make sure to safely bring him up, rest his head on your thigh, and wrap the head. Now, third, we go into like, different paths of gaining control that's not reverse Kesa. Reverse Kesa is the big go to because of these two options, and it's, it's a good way of pressuring into submissions. And it's a very, very good path to, to follow, but there's a couple of other options. And, Pretty briefly, gonna touch on. Okay, so Kimuras and also Sanchez. Go! Um, there's, a, there's a host of things that can happen. The, the key focus from the tripod position should be to find ways into your reverse case on. Um, the one we didn't touch on, I don't even need to get under this arm. I'm, I'm fully okay with getting here. This is a pretty good controlling position and it's easier to get even when, he, when he's acting wisely with his arms. Um, the only thing is, I have a, because I'm, I'm, I only have the, the head under control, I have a bit less control of this rotation. Um, but I'm going to control this hip by placing my thigh underneath and my weight on top. Um, also, from here, it's pretty easy to gain inside control on this, at least one arm. If he's keeping his elbows all the way in, I'm just going to grab elbows. Um, the more you do this to, to your training partners, the more they keep their arms in, because you know it sucks as soon as I get them. So all you're aiming for now is control of the elbows. In general, that's also not, not too new to wrestlers. Um, you want to kind of control the edges of your partner's body. It's oftentimes shoulders, hips, and uh, when it comes to rotation, it's the elbows. That's why real estate underneath an elbow is so great for wrestling in jiu-jitsu. Um, but people who know that, or people who listen to Creed, won't give that up. So all I can get is the edge of the elbow. I'm, I'm crimping elbows. Um, this will um, deny him rotation. So. This usually is enough to stop people from rotating, even if he brings his elbows all the way in. And now try to rotate in any of the two directions. Just keeping the elbows up will stop the rotation. It, it's super weird, but it, it basically feels awkward for the bottom guy. Um, even if you turn hard towards the, that direction, taking the elbow up will stop. So that's what I mean by controlling dynamics. It's kind of dynamic in itself because it, it allows them to move until there, and there I stop. And taking this elbow across gives me a lot of opportunity to, to gain something and to go into attacks, either here or on the other arm. Um, as soon as elbows leave the body, Kimura grips are the one go to the thing. Um, same goes for him not giving up space. If he's not really framing and I'm not finding anything to hold on to, it's edges of the body, so shoulders, and especially the elbow I can see. I will control this at all, at all times as soon as I don't have anything better to control. Um, if he's doing a good, good job with his arms, I will just use my legs. The good thing about this position also is it's dynamic, so I, I have pretty light legs. I can use them for a host of things. Um, if you don't particularly like the guy, or you just feel like making something happen, you can just start annoying them with, with knees and shins or necks. Um, and also you can address frames with it. Um, oftentimes, people will use this, the close arm to frame my hip. This doesn't really do too much, 
Um, you won't just get me off with it. Um, but it might annoy you because you just want to keep on. So this is kind of hard to address with my arm because I'm committing it too much and I might lose control of that bottom leg. I just use my knee and fold in that, that frame. Again, a pretty good controlling position. You're riding his bicep and it's, it's basically leaving this arm alone. Um, just a threat of a wrist lock here and his reaction to it, whichever one it is, will usually give you this elbow. And it basically leaves this arm alone so it's easy to harvest and to go back into attacks. Um, the next thing is the legs. It might happen that he somehow catches like a bit of your, of your lower leg, so you might just step too far and this happens. The good thing is you're probably not going to end up in half guard because it's hard for him to get control above your knee line. Uh, most of the times you can just pummel your leg out or uh, try and reach it again. Yeah, or just slide it out. It's hard for him to establish a solid control in between your knee and your hip and giving up your, um, your lower leg below your knee for a while isn't too bad. It's pretty easy to get out of it. If you're walking away from me here, yeah, if you're he's walking that way, we're back into the knee rides we did on Tuesday and leads us back into back attacks and mount. So to make it more clear, go back to your tripod and um, the one task he's going to give me is framing my hip. My leg does the work. If he does nothing, just hold on to the elbows. As soon as you hold on to the elbows, let the bottom guy try and turn and see how much it sucks to try and turn when your elbows are controlled. Um, the knee right thing, maybe only do it if you already know how the position works, or if you have been to my class on Tuesday, it might be too much. Um, in general, if you feel like you're already overloaded, it's, it's uh, Thursday and we've done quite a lot now, then uh, just go through the things we already did. I'd rather have you learn one thing um, and kind of know how it works, than learn all things not at all. Okay? So that's five minutes, we started a bit late, and then it's done for the day. Go! Um, one, one, one last time. Um, it's kind of weird to adapt to. The, the idea of carrying the log should be like the, the minimal takeaway for today. Um, it solves a whole lot of framing problems in side control situations and close to passing guard. As soon as their bottom leg is going to re-enter, switching and trying to carry him helps a lot. Next step should be controlling the elbows, controlling the, the levers for the rotation and trying to drop it to um, case of the other thing that's kind of attached to it that we briefly touched upon is um, it's kind of weird, but as soon as you have inside control, um, Stack him again. It's, it's the same way you would stack someone who has a nasty, nasty open guard and is inverting constantly. Just make him pay for it. It's the basics. Basically, it's the same idea here. I'm, I'm overloading him so much here um, that he's probably going to give me something. It, it doesn't cost me a lot of energy, but it takes pretty much all of his traditional escapes away because that's such a weird position. And all the wrestling escapes don't work if you, if you have no way to touch your shoulders or your elbows or your head to the mat. Bridging doesn't work. This is pretty much forcing the opposite of a bridge. And it's giving me elbows and the neck for a host of things. Um, but the key and major takeaway, if you only take one thing away from my classes, the first thing we did, that reverse tripoding into hips, carrying them like a log whenever your, your regular side control fades. Um, I'm gonna take a quick picture. Thanks for standing my ramblings for 10 minutes longer than you had to. And I uh, hope to see you in my class tomorrow. Thanks.